guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is lesson 3.4. In this video, we are going to find and compare slopes of lines. When we're talking about the slope of a line, it is the ratio of vertical change, which we're going to call the rise, compared to the horizontal change, which we're going to call the run, between two points on a line. Now, there's a few different ways that we can represent slope. One way that we can represent slope is by making a fraction and putting our rise over our run. Another way to represent this is by saying the change in y over the change in x. And we've also got a formula to help us find the slope between two points. And our formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When we're looking at slope, there are four different kinds of slope that a line could have. If we've got a line that goes up as we read it left to right, we would say that that has a positive slope. If our line goes down as we read it left to right, this has negative slope. If we've got a flat horizontal line, we say that that has a slope of zero. And if we've got a straight up and down vertical line, we say that slope is undefined. In this example, we're going to find the slope of the line passing through the given points. So we're given the points 6, 4, and 8, 2. And we're going to use that formula we talked about earlier, where it goes y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're going to plug these numbers into our formula. The first thing I would do is I would label these ordered pairs. This first ordered pair I'm going to call my x1 and y1 value. The second ordered pair will be x2, y2 then we have the numbers we need, we just need to plug them into the formula. So our y2 value on top is 2 minus our y1 value is 4 over our x2 value is 8 minus our x1 value is 6. And now we just need to simplify this down. On top, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And on bottom, if we take 8 minus 6, we just get 2. And then negative 2 divided by 2 gives us a slope of negative 1. In this example, we're given a couple of new points, and we're still going to find the slope between them using our slope formula. Just like we did on the last example, the first thing I would do is label these ordered pairs. So this first one is x1, y1, and our second one is x2, y2. And then we just have to fill the numbers in where they go. So our y2 value on top is 4 minus our y1 value is 0 over our x2 value is 6 minus our x1 value is 4. And again, we're just going to simplify this down. So on top, 4 minus 0 is 4. And on bottom, if we take 6 minus 4, we get 2. And then we have to take 4 divided by 2, which gives this line a slope of 2. In this example, we're given the point 6, 0 and 6, 4. Again, finding the slope, I'm going to label these as x1, y1 and x2, y2. Then if we start plugging numbers into our formula, we're going to go 4 minus 0 over 6 minus 6. On top, if we take 4 minus 0, we get 4. On bottom, if we take 6 minus 6, we get 0. Now, dividing by 0 isn't something we're allowed to do, mathematically speaking. We can't take 4 and divide it by 0, so we say that this one is undefined. The next thing we're going to be doing is comparing the slopes of two lines, and we're going to compare their slopes to see if two lines are parallel or perpendicular. The way we're going to check to see if lines are parallel is when we're comparing the slopes, we say that two lines are parallel if they have the same exact slope. When we're looking at lines that are perpendicular, lines that are perpendicular have slopes being opposite reciprocals. That opposite means that we're going to change the sign. So if it was originally positive, we would make it negative. If it were originally negative, we would make it positive. 
And then that word reciprocal means we're going to flip the fraction over. In this example, we're going to look at two lines and decide are those lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So for line 1, we're given the ordered pairs negative 3, 0, and negative 2, 4. For line 2, we've got 3, 1, and 4, 5. To determine if these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, we're going to need to look at their slopes. So we're going to have to do our slope formula for each line. If we start with line 1, I've labeled my ordered pairs as x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now I'm going to set up my slope formula. On top, we've got 4 minus 0 over negative 2 minus negative 3. Well, on top, 4 minus 0 is 4. And on bottom, negative 2 minus negative 3. Well, this double negative can turn into addition. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So we've got a slope of 4 for this line. Now, if we do the slope for line 2, again, I'm going to label my ordered pairs. And then I'm going to set up my slope formula. So on top, if we take 5 minus 1, we get 4, and on bottom, 4 minus 3 is 1, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. So the slope of our first line was 4, and the slope of our second line was 4. Since those slopes are exactly the same, I would say that these two lines are parallel. Taking a look at our next example, again, we're going to check, are these lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither, by looking at their slopes. So I'm going to find the slope of line 1 by setting up my slope formula. On top, if we take 3 minus 6, we get negative 3. And on bottom, if we take 4 minus 6, we get negative 2. Since these are both negative, a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive answer. So we get 3 halves as the slope for line 1. If we look at the slope of line 2, again, labeling those ordered pairs and plugging them into our formula. On top, if we take 2 minus 4, we get negative 2. And on bottom, 3 minus 0 is 3. We can't do any simplifying with this one, so it's just negative 2 thirds. Now, if we compare our two slopes, the slope of line 1 was 3 halves, and the slope of line 2 is negative 2 thirds. We have negative slopes, or opposite slopes, and their reciprocals, the fraction is flipped over. This one had the 3 on top and the 2 on bottom. Here we've got the 2 on top and the 3 on bottom. Since these are opposite reciprocals, these would be perpendicular lines. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.